Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we're trying some new stuff and the first thing is Moon Base 1 which is an adaptation of Mars Base 1 but removing the heat shield, reducing somewhat the, the supply load and uh, changing up this stage so it's a little bit more helpful. So this is going to land facilities for two Kerbals on the Moon and I'm reconsidering this Delta Avionics unit, but then again, it's 0.2 tons, and we've got the huge solar panels anyway, so maybe it's all right. I, I, I might want to make the solar panels huger, and also add more electric charge. Reason being that uh, we have to deal with the nighttime side of the moon, whereas, you know, with Mars, it rotates every 24-25 hours. The moon has much more of a nighttime side. I don't know, I mean, this is definitely not going to be enough to to handle that. Uh, let's put in what I can as far as electric charge. 231,000. Uh, that cuts down our Delta V substantially though. That's not great. Hmm. Well, we can uh, have longer duration thrusters here and uh, lengthen those thrusters. Oh, uh, let's just have it 95 percent. Every little change has a cascading effect of course. So that was 2.3 in length. Uh, well, I mean the more we increase these, the more of a burden it is on this, and this is already at its burn time limit of 12 minutes. So, but I really feel like electric charge is important. What we might do is reduce how much food, water, and oxygen we have. Right now we have one year's worth in here. That might be excessive. Um, so let's reduce the duration of that to like maybe 300 days. Let's see if that gets us to a good delta V. Well, 16,000. We need 9,500 to get into orbit because I mean, this is including the rocket. Um, oh, there's some uh, curious staging issue here. Those should probably be in with those. Okay, oh, okay, that's better. Hold on. I think uh, we just had a staging issue. Now, now we're all right. Now we're all right. Okay. So maybe we can pump that back up again. And I might want some connector ports. You'll note the radiators here, and that's of course because I'm. Well, I want to test the radiators because we've got a curious situation where realism overhaul is modifying the radiators and so is KSB Interstellar. And so can the radiators, so you can see type NAC loop radiator and um, well that's sodium potassium but I'm not entirely sure that that's what we need to like keep the oxygen cool so it doesn't boil off. That's my goal but I'm not too sure that that's what we need. So we're, we're trying to test that out. There's a cryogenic tank right now but yeah. Uh, let's get some connector ports some uh, which got KAS connector ports so that we can resupply this later on that'll be important let's carry four of them unfortunately we're not sending Kerbals with this we really aren't so the whatever we send Kerbals on will have to carry the drills and other inventory along with it okay but otherwise we have communication solar panels and everything I feel like it might be a good idea to increase the size of the solar panels a bit. But we're getting close to Delta V. Let's see. So, uh, 32 days to build it. It's on the same rocket that launched Mars Base 1. And that launched fine. So we're good. Let's build. Okay, our next launch is rather more ambitious. A lot of new things here. First of all, I decided to cut down on the unlock cost of the F1s from 400,000 to 130,000. And I also decided to um, reduce the, the actual unit cost from 5,000 to 3,200. And now, I'm not going to be using the base F1. I'm going to be using the F1A. So I unlocked uh, the F1A for an, an additional 40,000, so it's 170,000 total. And each F1A is 2,000 extra cost, so the actual unit cost is 5,200, just a little above the 5,000 uh, cost it was originally, the F1 was orig originally. Otherwise, I'd have to pay 7,000 for it. 
But it seemed weird that the F1A would be that much more expensive than the base F1. And, you know, all overall, the development cost, you have to figure that it was a little bit more rushed in the Apollo space program than it is right here. We're, we're well into our seven, uh, well, we're almost to 1980 here. So, yeah, I feel like we could probably uh, justify that. And otherwise, I don't get to use them. And I'm getting a little bit tired of NK engines. So uh, we want to uh, create our new Fiji system. Fiji from the F1 and J2, right? Uh, so F and J. And uh, 24N, so two F1s and four J2s. And then N4. And I didn't uh, adjust this at all. The Nerva, which is a tug right at the top. Let's go outside, scroll up, all the way up. It's a big rocket. Um, so here's our Nerva. And this Nerva tug has a duration of 17 minutes. And it doesn't have any payload right now. Empty, uh, it has a little cone on top, but we'll be jettisoning that. Uh, empty, it's 21 tons. And full of fuel is 63 tons. So that's not a great mass ratio. It's basically a 3 to 1 mass ratio. And that's because of the immense mass of the Nerva itself and also of its tanks. Something people don't appreciate is that the, the tank mass for, even if it's balloon cryo, for liquid hydrogen, because it's not dense, ends up being almost 10% the wet mass, which is like, you know, stock level uh, mass ratios there. So it's not very efficient as far as the mass ratios are concerned, even for a 17 minute burn uh, stage. Now, if we uh, dump the thrust weight ratio down much further, we could probably get like 30 minutes and uh, end up having something that uh, was a little bit better, but only marginally really. And the rate of burn time is 10 hours, it's got 60 ignitions. So I figured this would be a good burn time. Technically 15 minutes would be if you did the full burn time each time, a uh, full uh, fuel load each time. No, that's 40. That would that be 40 burns. Anyway, uh, but uh, so we're gonna have to refuel it and there's a docking port at the top, docking, Apollo docking system. We are carrying Arizine and N204 as well as necessary. Um, so, yeah, that's for the RCS thrusters. I'm a little bit concerned. Oh, well, look at that. I forgot something. Did I put it in here? No. I forgot the electric charge. We could have been in trouble. But no, now I remember. Electric charge. So, uh, let me remove these Arizine and N204 tanks. Let's get some electric charge. Uh, we do have the actual reactor of the Nerva, but I also put solar panels just in case. Oh, if we're going to do electric charge... We're going to need to make this service module. That's also unfortunate. Uh, okay, well, we'll have to deal with that. Let's say 68,000. That kills our Delta V even more. Uh, okay, 70,000, fine. I want my 17 minutes there. Okay, and an electric charge. Let's say uh, 20,000 should be fine. And then the rest, Arizona N204. And we've got more Arizona N204 down here. Now, you'll note that I'm trying the same radiator sort of idea, but we'll see how that works out with uh, the first launch, with the Moon Base 1. And if it doesn't look like it works, then I might reconsider that and edit this uh, craft file. But yeah, now now everything is even worse with the electric charge. You can see... Dry mass of 27 tons because we have to change that to a service module tank. Maybe I should just add a battery, you know? Uh, hold on. It's just not good to have that be a service module tank. I wish these batteries had some sort of utilization number. Alright, fair enough. Okay, so change is made. Our first Nerva. Very nerve-wracking. Very expensive. The Nervas are 25000 apiece. a piece. Curiously, it was supposed to cost a million to unlock. Like 1.75 million. And that's why I hadn't unlocked it. But it didn't take it out of our account. So I don't know if it's going to take it out of our account when we launch it. Or what's up with that. 
uh, some conflict occurred or something, and we didn't actually get charged to uh, unlock cost for the Nerva. So that's weird. And I'm worried that there might be some mod conflict. Again, KSB Interstellar and Realism Overhaul, I'm trying to get them work to work together, but it may be complicated with some of these parts that both of them try and modify. Anyway, because of the Nerva, this takes 85, uh, sorry, 89 days to build. So uh, we will build that. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to do those launches immediately. And that's because we've got these other maneuver nodes to handle. A Titan Shot, a AJS-1 uh, maneuver. And so we're going to have to take a look at those. But before that, I think it would be advisable to maybe do a crew transfer mission or two. We've got the this Olympus, uh, Orpheus 2 on Olympus, so that's for the moon. And then the Orpheus on the Nico 606A, and that's for our Earth orbit station. So yeah, uh, crew transfer time, I think I had promised that. So let us do it. Uh, so I can roll this out and we've got three days and then after we launch probably another two days before we have to handle this maneuver. So we should be docked by then. Um, not necessarily bringing them down immediately. Maybe we'll have uh, extra Kerbals on the station temporarily. I don't know if there's room. We'll see. Anyway, hopefully I won't forget about them. But uh, the trip back takes extra time. So we could do that uh, in a few, you know, after we do some other stuff. Alright, so here we are launching our new crew for our Moonport station. And it will be Lara Kerman, Wilnard Kerman, and Bob Kerman. So, throttle is up, SAS is on. Um, I trust those engines do not have to ignite at the same time as these. Ignition. And launch. All right. And we're off. Been a long time since we've done a crew rotation. That was the supply situation. Well, on here it's 31 days. Over at Moonport 1, half a year. And Spaceport 2, quite a while. We really should get three people on Spaceport 2 instead of just two. We also need to add research labs to these stations. That's another thing I'm going to be looking at. But maybe we could employ our Nerva to uh, handle those transfers. So, but then again, it's a little bit more complicated since, you know, we have to dock with it and do all that stuff. So it actually takes more time to use the Nerva to do it than for anything else. So maybe we'll just reserve the Nerva for, for when we absolutely need it. Like our, our base rocket would be really, really big otherwise. A situation where we are going to have to uh, do two launches anyway would make sense to use the Nerva. Alright, getting ready for the end of the boosters. We're going to ignite the core. And throw all down, because otherwise there'll be high G-forces. Okay, and throttle up and set. Everything good with the boosters, no engine problems. I guess we'll be waiting until we light the G2 before letting go of the launch escape system. That should be alright. Okay, and this stage is out. Separation. And ignition. Come on. Ignition. Okay, the J2 has started. We've got plenty of time to apoapsis. Uh, the apoapsis is a little bit high. I'm leveled out at least. And let's get rid of the launch escape system. Okay. Okay, we are now making orbit with the J2. Plenty of fuel for our transfer to the moon. That should be good enough. Oop, it's... There we go. 
Shut down 296 by 195, a little bit high on the apoapsis, but I knew that ahead of time. I uh, haven't had to fly this particular route recently, but let's plot for the moon and head on over there. Okay, it's a bit past time to go. So, settling the fuel down looks very stable. Ignition and node, actually. Okay. And we are on our way. We will have to make an adjustment once we get there because we're about 13 degrees off from the station. We could do that as part of our orbital burn, I'll see. Okay, finishing off the burn. Okay, three seconds off there. Let's see where we're at. Okay, that's basically as expected. All right, and 13 degrees off. So let's head on over there after separating the J2 stage. Because we need to extend our solar panels and everything, we can't really make use of this 655 meters per second. Uh, at least we do have some margin on all these things. Anyway, separation. Come to think, oh, it didn't knock us too far off. Okay, I was worried that uh, separation would have knocked us a little bit, but not so much. Okay. Maybe we could save some money and just not have the fuel cells. We have fuel cells and solar panels right now. It's probably not necessary. I mean, it's a good backup uh, if we're on like the nighttime side for a long time, but I don't see that it's really strictly necessary when we have 73,000 electric charge inside. Anyway, on we go. All right, it looks like before we get there, we're going to have to deal with this Titan shot maneuver. So, well, we'll get as close as we can and then jump to that. Though, before jumping to it, I'll make sure to turn on Ignore Max Temp, just in case the RTG heat has accumulated too much. So let's do that. Um, ignore Max Temperature. And jump to that mission. Okay, undoing Ignore Max Temperature. And we've got this burn to do. What does it do? Let's remind ourselves. And I think we're trying to get an encounter with Mimas, was the idea here. And that'll be another 10 days after this. So we're just doing a flyby of Mimas for science. Probably the Mimas encounter is something we're going to do in this episode. So there will be science. Okay, well, that's about as close as any sort of maneuver can be done. And I don't see an encounter. What are you doing? Separation 466 kilometers, so we're close. Uh, there we go. Okay, looks like 107 kilometers is as close as we're getting there. And just uh, to see if we can do something more once we get close to titan is it possible that we could have a no got a 24 degree inclination with respect to uh, i said too close to titan i mean uh once we get close to saturn can we get a titan encounter and the answer is not so easily because of that hmm we could conceivably hit Titan just boosting up like this and hitting it at a node. But let's do the Mimas encounter first. So, that sphere of influence change is in 10 days. We'll add that alarm. But let's get back to our crew rotation mission at the moon. Okay, we are ready for our first burn around the moon. The moon is quite dark right now. Um, yep, we are on the nighttime side, and we're going to get into a loose orbit, but correct most of our inclination difference right here. So that's the plan. Okay, uh, well, we need to actually ignite the engines without doing anything drastic. Uh, let me just temporarily put that there, just in case. Alright. 
All right, well, the key thing is not to let our periapsis go too far down because our peri we are not doing this burn at our periapsis. We're actually doing it at the, um, I think, ascending node right now. Uh, yeah, because we're pointing south. Well, it's a little bit complicated because we're also going backwards. I forget exactly how that goes. Okay, really wanting to dock this time. Let's see. It's got all these pauses in the middle, and I'm strongly thinking of dumping remote tech eventually. Eventually it's going to just become a hindrance. We've got all the antennae. That's just a thought. I don't know how much lag remote tech adds, but anything to reduce the pauses in the game right now, given that we have so many missions, I mean, would probably be the best thing to do to keep this going. Anyway, we have delivered crew to the station. Um, the other crew is probably still in that capsule. Let's see. Uh, did I ever move them in? Oh, only Chris Lian's in that one. Let's see. Bill and Valentina are in here. Let's just move Bill and Valentina to that other pod. Okay. And so they'll be ready to go when we decide to bring them back. But for now, we'll have a moonport station with six crew. Hopefully not for long, because they they'll consume a lot of, of consumables. But at least until we get this Titan shot done and this maneuver with this AJS. Let's focus on those right now. Okay, we are approaching Mimas, and we have to figure out signal delay here. Looks like it's an uh, hour and a half is the delay. We're probably not going to have another chance at Mimas for a long time. So I'm doing all the experiments repeatedly. Not sure exactly when we'll be like getting close to Mimas and stuff like that. No, I'm not thinking about that right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, that's an hour and 20 minutes, not an hour and a half. I was doing it too early. Okay, I've uh, sent the command to do each of them a few times now. Um, maybe one more time. Uh, looks like we have some time to apoapsis there. I mean, time to periapsis, sorry. And we are uh, going very fast relative to Mimas. The map shows uh, a periapsis of 110 kilometers. That's good, because I sure don't want to smack into Mimas. Titan shot SOI change, indeed. Okay, now we're in Mimas' SOI at 190 kilometers. Okay, try and transmit. Oh, come on, come on. Let me do things. Transmit the telemetry analysis. In space near Mimas. Well, there's not much of space far away from Mimas when you're in Mimas SOI. Textures are a little bit icky on this side. Mimas' lowlands. Sure. Okay, 90 signs for... Okay, how much signs do we have right now? 1,488. Let's keep track. 90 signs. Okay, very good. 75 more signs. And micrometeorite detector. Might have actually already done that. Let's see. Can we get above 2,000 here? Uh, no, it looks like we already did that. Okay. So we got 1,982 signs altogether. We, uh, I think on this run we got like 600 signs or something like that. Okay, well, that was very good as far as science is concerned. Boy, is Mimas SOI small <laughs> compared to the size of Mimas. And perhaps what we need to do is plot another maneuver and try and boost up. And I, I just want to hit D on. Okay. Actually, that doesn't need a boost up, it needs a boost down. Maybe it's better to hit on the other side, since we're going to be trying to encounter Titan anyway. How much would this boost cost? 500. It's a lot. 
that looks promising, doesn't it? Okay, we have a Dion encounter, a periapsis there. Uh, slowly lifting our orbit up. Hopefully, eventually encountering Titan, but uh, we went for Mimas. We haven't done Enceladus yet, and maybe going for Dion right away is is missing out on, on an opportunity, but since we have an encounter here, I think this is a good thing to go with. So that node will be in 46 days. So we're doing this thing. Alright, well, we have to hop on over to this AJS-1 and see what's up with that and its maneuver node. Okay, so here we are, and this was originally meant to be a Jupiter mission, but if I recall, oh, uh, it looks like it is a Jupiter mission. Oh, good. So this one went as planned. I, I seem to recall one such mission getting uh, re uh, placed in a weird orbit and we couldn't get it to Jupiter, but this one is a proper Jupiter mission now. And it is arriving, and our plan is to capture it into orbit. Okay. Well, let's do that. We're just a day away there. And then maybe we can do some of the hopping around the moons like we're doing around Saturn with the other mission. Not that we haven't visited the moons of Jupiter already. We've done more of that here than we have with Saturn. I hope I have verified that that is a safe periapsis and not inside the atmosphere of Jupiter or anything. Um, well, our engine is on and we have enough delta V to make this burn, so that's fine. We can't queue up any experiments right now. It won't be in time. But that's alright, we'll have further passes at this altitude, I'm sure. Relative inclination to something is 2.8, so that's good. Maybe I had already been angling to encounter something. Looks like Io. Maybe we can do a flyby of Io. I don't think we have yet. Okay, selling fuel down, and ignition. Okay, delete the alarm. 47 kilometers per second, we're skimming past the surface of Jupiter. Okay, we have captured, but we don't want our orbital period to be a whole year or anything. Um, well, we're doing something interesting. Anyway, Io periapsis after an orbit. So, that's good. Doesn't take too much, 35 meters per second only. So if you can see our little uh, target orbit in here, that is a mission that I hope to hope to fulfill with the Nerva. We're not going to bring the Nerva all the way to Jupiter, I think. There's no point, unless we can completely stop boil-off. There'll be boil-off of the liquid hydrogen, and we can't bring it all the way over here. But we could use it as a sort of stage to transfer us here. Yeah, so that'll be the plan for that, and we'll see whether we can manage that one. But anyway, we have a plot here. Uh, 20 days. Uh, this should remain fairly close to Jupiter. I hope near to Jupiter is not like, you know, a line drawn between those two. Hopefully both of those qualify. Okay, alarm. 20 days for this one. Okay, well, and there's another AJS thing in 29 days. But for now, um, well, the thing is, with the crew around the moon, I'm thinking that maybe we should just keep them at the station right now, and then once we land our moon base, 
we can send a lander mission and then land them at the moon base. The trouble is we have to do all that, you know, within a quick amount of time. Right now we've only got 90 days of supplies on Moonport 1. But it'd be nice to, uh, instead of bringing them back, just send them down to the moon. I'll have to think about that. That's, uh, that's a complicated subject and maybe we should just bring them back and then send a new crew over. So I'll think about that. Uh, for now, I think I'll leave it here. We've done a few things. We've gotten some science around Saturn. We've gotten this probe in orbit around Jupiter. And we have uh, sent new crew to our moon port. And I've introduced the Nerva. And so we will proceed with uh, that. Uh, well, we'll probably proceed with the moon base one uh, in the next episode, as well as uh, either bringing the crew from the moon back or having them stay there for a while and also doing a crew rotation around the Earth. Alright, plenty to do here. And so, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.